How's it going, everyone? Emilio Gonzalez here, and today we're going to take a look now at this concept about subclassing as part of the hard part of the object programming in JavaScript. So this is a course taught by Will Fenton, the CEO of CodeSmith, this software engineer and machine learning residency headquarters in London, New York, in California, where here the goal of this course is to look at how this pattern, this approach of building application using objects allow us to build at scale applications in a professionally uh, in a profession uh, sorry in a professional engineering environment. So this is something important, especially because the business people and people in the economy now realize how important it is to provide things at scale for growing. Why is that? So me be, here, I'm going to play the little Apple case here, which is the more goods uh, a community or a nation product uh, in theory, the better off it will be for their citizens and for companies because now they will have much more uh, not only goods and service resource uh, but also they can trade that uh, and generate a, have an increase in economic output uh, as well as uh, increase their presence so with that, all right, uh, the subtle things that we're going to do or the specific objective is that, well, we're going to say, we're going to take a look at the new op or the style, how OOP uh, plays in JavaScript. Now, what is the uh, classic style of object programming, subclassing, how the prototype uh, chains work, and then uh, these new features that come from EGMA 2015 about how can we now use the new keyword or class and extend what is doing behind the scenes and what are they allow us to do in the language. So we can be more precise about describing each one of those. And personally, uh, I'm also recording this series of videos as a way to improve not only my analytical skills, which is something that a lot of companies are looking for, and also this is something relevant to yourself, uh, as well as your technical communications. Can I implement your approach based on your description? and look at good practice uh, in engineering as well as soft skills like well have patience uh, be empathetic and lastly is the language computer science experience or the language computer and your experience so this course is organized is by first understand a little bit of context of why we create objects Okay, we're not going to dive deep into the history. Is into the history, uh, just good enough. If you want to do that, that'll be great. I will invite you to do that. But first is this introduction of the audio and team programming, and then how we can create objects. What are the several ways to do that? So for example, we got some couple solutions. Uh, and how each one of those solutions uh, came up with some trade-offs. And what is the alternative solution uh, to that? So we can now move on to uh, look at what is the prototype and how the new keywords uh, work, what is part of the challenge, especially uh, when you're building objects using the new keyword, 
how the scope and the value of this change because the dynamic nature of uh, JavaScript and specifically the value of this, which contains uh, several rules that are going to apply and the, in it, it modify the behavior in where it this uh, it modify the behavior of this uh, when you are using in a particular context, whether it's on a function or a narrow function or inside of an object. Uh, and then suddenly, or, uh, and then the default prototype chain as a way to understand uh, now how certain objects that provide a language by default, so for example, the object or the function constructor actually uh, now inherit property and methods through the prototype change, as well as other type of objects like array or boolean or number. Uh, in by looking at that, which is something that uh, we actually going to describe that, by looking at this prototype change nature, how can we now is creating uh, subclasses. And why this is important? Because if you want, for example, create an object, uh, and then you want to extend functionality, or you want to reuse some of this functionality, and create is a new set of property and methods, okay? Now uh, we can do that. And there is a particular way of how to do that, how to do the subclassing. Subclassing uh, with factory function, what is the challenge with that? Then subclassing with the new keyword and the call. And lastly, the subclasses with class, uh, extend, and super. So remember that at the, at the end of the day, in the object and programming, we want is to know how to group data and functionality that are relevant to each other in one single bundle. That's all. Okay, so we can now uh, help us to organize and maintain debug and test our code. So that's why we use uh, object because back in, back in the '60s. A lot of software engineers back then actually were concerned about that. They said, hey, how can we now make this uh, data and functionality bundled together, relevant data and functionality bundled together in an object? So here we look at the how can we create objects in JavaScript using the object uh, literal dot notation we can also use that using object create, okay, which is a built-in function, as well as using the function construction. Or in, the, in other words, you define a function that will return is an object. So the uh, the first solution uh, to construct object is by inside of the function you create is a new object using a, a literal string or, or object literal notation uh, and then you're going to add a property to that which is this one uh, the solution one exactly then you also going want you also here can add the functionality uh, to the object the problem with this solution is that because the data is unique, but the functionality is the same, we are now duplicating is all of this functionality, and we are not being memory efficient. And imagine that you have 100, 200, 300 users, 10,000 users. Now you can see that this is not feasible. So we need to find a better way to actually is a strap or grab that data, grab that functionality into own objects 
and somehow create a reference to it, create a link. Okay, that's when the uh, solution to by using is the object create that allow you to have to have fine control about which object can have access to. Uh, in other words, you are manually see your setting is the change uh, or the link, the reference to that function or the, to that uh, object functionality. Uh, and this is how you can actually create that reference uh, for you. So, so far it's so good because this is one of the things that you're gonna see a lot in, in Let's see, this is not, this is now, is, this is something, this solution is not being used widely. Uh, in fact, is now uh, deprecated. Some people call this a sophisticated creating object. Remember that the, at the end of the day, uh, the object in deep programming, what we really care about is that bundle relevant data and functionality uh, in here we're looking as a way to be efficient uh, with our data. Which data we want to store, and which data we want is to store once, and, the, and have some reference. So because here is what is JavaScript nature is creating these things called the prototype change. Uh, we need to know what it's doing uh, behind the scenes. So anytime you create an object in JavaScript, it assigns the proto, the dunder proto dunder property that holds is a reference to the uh, object function constructor, uh, which is the prototype. So these functions, which are part of this built-in object, in JavaScript everything is an object. So object itself uh, has a function constructor and as function they have the ability not only to run or call this function but also to add properties and methods to that and they do that inside of the prototype which is a hidden property uh, from this function so this is the way how now can we referencing which is something that we're doing here uh, to functionality to relevant functionality that we want to okay uh, but people now on the new specification of ECMAScript say hey let's gonna use now the new keyword for that we're now here we're going to automize the creation. We're going to automize is the uh, creation of an object. So you don't have to actually manually when have crafting create the reference. Uh, here we're gonna do that for you, okay? With the new keyword, uh, but there is a particular way that you need to do things as a way to organize your code. So uh, that is, all right, the function that you need to define part of the solution three, okay? That the function that you need to define, where inside of that, uh, we're gonna uh, set, or we're gonna use the value of this as a way to assign all of the uh, properties and then inside of the product that we're going to define is a functionality, okay? So when you run, or when you use the new keyword, there's something happening behind the scene. First, it's setting the this value to the object that we're going to create, okay? Second, it now automizes the mechanism of where are you, where it's going to look up uh, in the prototype. In other words, it creates now the reference uh, 
which is inside of the prototype, and now point that to the prototype, okay? Uh, and then you, it return the object that you want to create. So that's one of the reasons why we have is this particular way of creating objects using new keywords. And that's quite compelling. And this is something that you're going to see a lot of in professional code out there like this. And that makes a ton of sense. So even though that this approach is uh, something that is now in professional environments, uh, especially what you want to define is functionality inside of those uh, methods, so for example, inside of those prototypes, in those functionality. Uh, and let's say now here is the, let me see if I get this, if I have that, exactly, for example, here. For example, uh, here, so what happened when we want to define, for example, functionalities uh, inside of an, another functionality as a way to expand, uh, as a way to enhance is, sorry, as a way to enhance what are the operations can we work on this data okay what is the functionality that we can operate on this data so because of the dynamic nature of the value of this uh, which makes things quite weird quite strange to work with uh, people now back in the old days uh, say hey let's going to now hold the reference of this into that variable uh, and then you can make her access to that. Other people say, hey, you know what? It'll be better to actually is use bind as a way to pass the value or the context of this before you run the function. Or use apply or call. Uh, and then when you run this function, I want you to pass is the context of this. This is something that you're going to see a lot in professional code uh, and this is by be this has become actually is the way of how you can now pass the proper data and apply this uh, relevant functionality to that because the problem with this or particularly it has several rules the value of this and when you define one of the rule is that the value of this will be whatever is on the left side when it was called especially on the function context okay so on function context the value of this according to the MDM docs will be whatever is on the left side when this uh, function is being called but because inside of this you don't have anything on the left side like add one because let's see here how this works so we are now looking so javascript say in the user increment javascript javascript saying let's gonna like take a look at user one okay uh on the prototype let's gonna take a look at user one it contains the increment function okay do we have that in the proper object no. Do we panic? No. We go now to the proto that holds a reference to the prototype function constructor to see if we have that method called increment. Do we get it? Yes. All right. So here we're going to now run this function. This we're going to create is this brand new execution context, function execution context where uh, here we are declaring is the add function one okay and then we're calling that function 
So because at this moment, when we are going to run the function add one, and uh, since the value of this inside of a function, again, this is part of the rule of this value, uh, is whatever it is on the left side, okay? And here in this case, add one, when it runs, doesn't have anything on the left side, okay? Uh, or doesn't point to anything, the the what the thing that I have on the left side is nothing. It's, it's not there. It's just at one. By default, it say, "Hey, let me now return this thing called window." And that's the, the, that's the reason why we have, for example, window as the value of this. And then you attach this property score, uh, and then you add that one. So that's not the behavior that we want. We want us to now apply the score plus plus to the relevant data. So that's why we have to go with uh, solutions like the arrow function locally for us. Okay. Well, now this is another rule of the this. When you are in an arrow function, the value of this will be uh, where it was declared. So if you take a look at this in the this in arrow function, arrow functions create closures over this value. Something important here. It means that it creates a persisting state that is going to now allow you to access to the function uh, on of the outer side scope from this inner function. So arrow functions create closures over this value of the enclosing execution context. In other words, when you are running a function, the value of this will be now uh, whatever is being defined. So in the following example, we create object via a me method get this setter, uh, get this getter, that return a function that return the value of this. So for example here, right? The return function is created as an arrow function, as you can see here, uh, that returns a function that return the value of this. The return function is creating a narrow function, so it is this is permanently bound to this. So it is a closing function. So after all, the value of this is not only creating a closure here, uh, which means that it will point to whatever is uh, of the, yeah, it will point here to where it was declared. So the value of this will be whatever it was declared. So now here we are creating a closure with this here by returning a, a function like that. We're creating a closure where now the getter, okay, will be effectively uh, is our object here. So we will assume that get at this is not a is a non-strict function, which means that it's contained in a non-strict script and not further nested in a class or a strict function. We can call get this getter as a method of object. Exactly. Which binds this to object inside of its body. The return function is assigned to a variable fun. Uh, now being called phone, the value of this return is uh, still get this getter, which op, which is op, exactly. If the return function was not an arrow function, such call will cause the this value to be global this by default, because get this getter is non-strict. So this is exactly what they're doing here. 
hey, function get this getter. If this is a function, it say true, but be careful. If you unbind the method of an object, exactly, without calling it, because it, uh, get this getter is still a method that has varying this value, calling function here in the following example return the global this because it followed the this from function two, which is the global this. Since, isn't, since it is called without being attached to any object. This behavior is very useful when defining callbacks. Usually, each function expression created its own this binding. Each function expression created its own this binding, which shadowed the this value of the upper go. Now you can define function as other function if you don't care about the this value and only create this binding where you do. So in other words, now the value of this, especially in arrow function, it'll be relevant to where it was defined, okay? To what it was written. TLDR is that. So why this is important? Because now it actually, with this approach, uh, using the arrow function. So the arrow function, uh, any time you, any function, even though they're telling you here, any function execution, yeah. so function expression, so function expression create, it is on this. And whether it is a normal function or an arrow function. And in the case of the this, inside of an arrow function, uh, the value of that will be when it was written. So, because now uh, we set the value of this to be part of whatever at one is holding, uh, now this is how we can access to the relevant data. Now this is how can we say, okay, let's go to point to the proper data. So is there any approach to this? Is there any uh, issues with that? Uh, yeah, it is. Especially when you need to define more functions. So uh, the trade-off here is that you can have much more readability in terms of functionality uh, and as you can imagine here with this particular approach we can now say hey now that we fix that queer behavior uh, even though we have this particular way of creating objects in JavaScript and you define it as a function uh, constructor with all the data as well as the method inside of the prototype. And then by using the new keyword, you can spin up that. So that's quite interesting. Uh, and also this is something that you're gonna see a lot in professional code. But now the JavaScript designers, uh, they are ashamed of the prototype nature and they say, no, 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 no. Uh, well, we don't actually want to do that. Uh, in fact, we would like to know our code looks like much more like other Unity programming, such as Python, B++. Uh, so would it be better to create now objects and functionality in one single bundle. If this, in, if this doesn't recall what we have learned so far, what, what, what I mentioned early about that object and key programming is all about is how you can put relevant data and its functionality in one single bundle. So now with the new class keyword, and extend, and super, it allows us to now 
in one single place define it is properties and methods in one go. That's good. That's that's powerful. That that's powerful. So but behind the scene it's working the same as this solution three. So behind the scene is working at using the new keyword. So that's it, right? As you can see, uh, this is the solution three of how you can create object with the new keyword, okay? Which automizing is the linking reference or the prototype change for you. Well, you can organize your data into a function constructor and your functionality. You're going to define inside of the prototype, okay? Uh, and now with class, we say, instead of doing all of that, we're going to bundle that in one single go, all right? So before going into that, we also look at what are the properties and methods that we can share uh, and for example if you want if you're building a user if you're using if you're building a, a ping pong game or any game um, let's say you want the user you define is not only the name and the score but also you want it to now allow other users um, to have extra features okay uh, and how you can now find a way to make those base features from the users uh, and then you create now for these specific use cases uh, allow this new user uh, with these special skills with these special uh, attributes and functionality and that's when uh, we need to take a look at subclassing and how now this subclassing or now how this uh, inheriting is happening behind the scenes. That's why we look at the default prototype chain as a way to understand how these things work underneath the hood. And anytime you create an object, for example, in our case, so we are defining an object. We are def we are reserving a space in memory uh, for this comes with a label object where we uh, inside of that have a key as a num, a value as three. So here we are accessing to the object value uh, property num. Okay, and then we have this thing called headphone property. And what is this? So by default, anytime you are creating an object, JavaScript when you when JavaScript evaluates that statement, it say, okay, so let me now create by default is this uh, proto reference that will be point to the uh, function constructor object. This is for object. You also can have it for function and for arrays and for any other built-in objects that JavaScript provides or that you as a user generate as a way to share methods and properties across the prototype chain. And that's something beautiful because with this you can say Oh, now that you know how these things work uh, behind the scene, let's going to take, let's going to make, let's going to use this, okay? Let's going to use this <clears throat> uh, in a way that not only uh, allows to inherit property and methods, and by applying, for example, is common functionality or in other words is that by applying it or by by receiving this method for example in the case of array 
by receiving these methods, which are typical solutions to common problems, hey, filter, hey, um, hey, filter, find first, uh, find last, uh, read those functions, and that kind of thing, uh, I want you to now see how can we do that, okay? Or I want you to, uh, to use this method. Uh, and that's part of the reason why, as a computer science or software engineer, that now has the ability to make abstractions, especially senior developers, make complex topics meaningful to others, not only for the colleagues, but also for non-technical people, uh, is quite important. And I think it'll it'll be way 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 important as we move on here in uh, this field. A uh, quick side note: this is something uh, relevant. Any time we are now creating is a product or a mechanism or a pattern. Uh, we need to find a way to make it accessible to others and give them now tools and understanding about why we're doing this and make it meaningful to them. Because as humans, we make sense of the world through stories. So, uh, that's what we are looking here at this particularly uh, as a way to put a practice or our knowledge here and solidify is the substract of our fundamentals of the reason of why we are doing this uh, and never lose focus of the end goal okay even though that on top of JavaScript you're going to build or you're going to make it use a lot of these uh, frameworks so Angular, React, or Vue or you know, or express or happy and that kind of thing. Okay, at the end of the day, uh, all of them want us to achieve the same thing, which is how can we organize relevant data and the functionality into one single bundle, and from there make it our life as a software engineer much more easy to maintain, debug, and test. So now we can create application at scale in a professional engineering environment, as well as providing value to the consumers and also to the shareholders. So that's actually a very interesting challenge. Uh, and it's up to you to do the work. So here we are now looking at how can we create here is how can we create challenge for person from constructor. We have the person from constructor. Create a function person from constructor that takes an input, a name and an age. Okay. Uh, when call the function, we'll create person object using the new keyword instead of the object of create. So we are automating is the process of creating the prototype chain where we can share property methods through that. So because now we are making use of the this key or the new keyword, so the way how we define this uh, object is by first defining the function constructor, which is something that is here. Define the function constructor. We're going to accept all of these parameters. Uh, and when you run the new keyword here, uh, JavaScript will say this function constructor, the value of this, I will initialize that as this empty object that we're going to create first. Second, that means the find is the prototype for the proto reference, okay? Uh, and 
points that to be function constructor objects, where in our case um, is this, the function constructor object. So, this. And now to that, I'm going to inherit all of the property and methods relevant from this object. Uh, in JavaScript, we'll continue to look at the proto, okay, until it points to null, until we say, hey, enough. There's nothing there. So, and the last sec, and the last part of this function construct, function construction, uh, using the new keyword, is that it returns the object for that. So now that makes a lot of sense. So here we're saying, hey, this dot name will be the name that we're receiving as parameter, similar to this, to the age, okay? Uh, and then, listen to describe this quickly. Uh, so by using the new keyword, it'll say, hey, let me now define if the value of this inside of the function constructor as the current object that we're going to create. One. Second, let me now uh, link or make a reference on the proto to the prototype functions object constructor. And I'm going to look at that prototype change until it points to null, which is which means is there's nothing. Enough. Stop. Here. So this is pretty much uh, what it's going to do. And then after that, it then create the object for us. Where now we can have access to uh, here. Mm -hmm. Person from constructor. Oh, okay. And we also need to exactly because now we're going to make grid like this. So we also need to here it say this person from construct constructor because first we define is the data and now we're going to define is the functionality prototype uh, mm -hmm. Prototype Prototype is that the person from const constructor let me spell this constructor prototype person constructor. Or instead of person constructor as it is. As it is. So when we run the code. Person here is not a function, oh, um, is the uh, person 
constructor as it is okay so i want the i want the result from this which is that grid okay and i want you to add it to the prototype this is undefined Another way to do this is by saying this dot read Yeah, but it say hey Mike doesn't have any property like that. Because of this, it's like my is not a grid function. So as I want to add the functionality to the cons to the prototype, we say, hey, let me now add that person constructor. It now will be a reference. Dot grid. Okay, because that's all. What I want is the reference for that. That's quite interesting. That's quite interesting because here you say, now that this is a function here, that is pointing to here, I would like to bind is the context from I would like to bind the context to that. We can say it's in greed, right? That'll be a person, okay? Because the whole point of this is that, hey, I want you to now add this method here, that this is the functionality here to the person constructor. The question is that, are we storing its functionality or reference? Here we're only storing its reference. Exactly. Exactly. Here we are storing its reference. Not not running function. Okay, under the process that we're holding is reference. So that's exactly what we did here. So first we define is our data. Okay. And in a function construction. And then we define is the functionality for that. Under the prototype. So we say, hey, you know what? 
Okay. Uh, I want you to now make that happen. Make it work. Like this. Person constructor. So, um, type error online now. Type error. Uh, this dot name is equal to name type error. This is a name is equal to name, this is age as age. Type error on line eight. This is on the file. But it's this, bro. Oh, I think is hmm. Person constructor. Oh, okay, unless you say something like this, you say, hey, uh, new <laughs> person constructor uh, with empty value, in fact, new person constructor. So by doing this, you need to say, hey, now I'm going to create a, a function. Yeah, now I'm going to, now look at this. By using the new keyword in person construction, I'm going to it's create the data, which is greet, that holds a function, okay? Uh, then I'm going to now create the proto reference from the function object constructor here, in this case from the function object constructor, uh, and then I'm going to return this object, which will contain is the greet property. Which is grid property. And then you get it.
Okay, this will be one sin. Again, this may be one sin. Okay. Uh, and when I run this code, it says, it, they say, it's like, no, no, don't do this. In fact, do this. You say this. Uh, it'll be the new, new person constructor. Okay. Which now it'll make much more sense here. This will be the new person constructor. What it now going to run is the property, the data. In this case, it will make it will assign all of this property to this newly object created. So first, you're going to create a this. This is an empty object. Okay. Second, you're going to create the proto reference to the function object constructor. In this case, to the function. And then you're going to return the object which contains the Greek property. So we assign this to that. Right? Our end, we say this is a, this is a, and that kind of thing. When we run this, it say, hey, invalid assign. Assigning in the left hand side. Or we can say it's a Greek. person here and then person will have the name as well as the age question is that do we need to return the object yes we need in this fashion yes we need yes we do wait up Mm -hmm. Because this has a particular way of how you can now create from other functions. Okay, that makes a lot of sense.
All right. Again, because they have this particular way of dealing with things. Okay? This is when you say, hey, let's also define it all the property here, and then we return is the object as it is. So we have this one particular way of how can we now first inherit property from uh, how can we inherit how can we inherit properties from a a base function constructor and then how can we now assign our own property and method as part of the subclasses to then create or or current new creator right person from constructor person constructor mm -hmm. so what we're doing basically here is that subclassing we have a base class all right and then we now from there we want to access to the proper uh, properties and define our own for this object so define our own property and method to work on this data mm -hmm. that's quite interesting that's quite interesting totally it is okay without editing the code you already written Add an introduce method to the person constructor. Mm -hmm. Function that log hi, my name is this. Exactly. So now this is when you can add to the base class methods. Functionality. For example, it is when you say a person construct constructor which is a function constructor that by default those functions uh, objects uh, JavaScript now provide is this hidden property called prototype where here is when we can have access to this object shape of the function right so they're all in a function you can have access to the property and method as well as you can run this. So here we're going to define it a method called introduce, where now this function will going to log hi, my name is this. It's going to define a function here, but behind the scenes the value of this function will be is whatever is on the left side when this function is being called, okay? Which means is in our particular case, the proper data that we want to work with, the person that must contain is um uh, that must contain is that property, which is uh, here this dot name this is what I want to use to print that up console.log I'm going to use this template string here and say hi my name is provide the value the string interpolator like this so what we're we doing here we are now adding is this functions to the prototype Person constructor, okay, uh, with the value uh, and then access to the this dot name. The question is that the person constructor doesn't doesn't have that property. Is a person from uh, from constructor, so this will fail. Are you sure? Well, let's find out. When we need to run is this. <clears throat> okay. Uh, when we need to run this. Okay. When we need to run this. Um, 
it will say, hey, I'm going to now define it to this. We can, we can define it not only person constructor, but also we could define it on here. On the person from constructor. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's what interesting. Exactly. Look at this. Look at what we're doing here. <clears throat> Look at why we are defining it inside of this. Uh, and not in the person as it is. So the reason why we're defining it all of our methods in the function construction is because here, uh, when we now have trying to access to the this.name, it will do something like this. First, you're going to run this person object. It say, hey, let me now use the new keyword where now the value of this will be the current object that we're going to create here, which is that grid. Okay. Uh, we're going we're defining is that. We also defining is this methods uh, in the prototype. So this person also now inheriting is the pro the, the prototype which contains introdus, all right? Uh, and then this person that we're going to return uh, contains the name and the age. So now this object here that we construct, the thing is the name, the age, as well as property that we inherit from the prototype, which is greet, right? So when we run that function, Okay, we will now, or in this case, when we call this function here, Jacky will look at now Mike and say, "What is Mike? Mike is a object. Uh, uh, Mike is a object that is a return from the per person from construction. Okay, that now has the following shape: has a name, has an age." And also has inherent properties from the uh, person function constructor, which is greet, as well as from it is prototype, which is the introdus. Okay, so it look at the introdus and say, okay, I got this. Now let me run this. Okay, what is this? Uh, I'm going to print uh, console.log this, uh, hi, my name is this, which is whatever is on the left side, which is Mike. And then we say, okay, Mike, do you have any property called name? Yes, it is. And then you got it. That's one of the reasons why you don't use, uh, you don't define that inside of the uh, person uh, from construction because this function uh, here, uh, we are not using that. We're not using it the person from, from construction to define that um, property and method. That's a quite interesting challenge here. That's a quite interesting challenge here. That's a quite interesting challenge here.
Eso fue pues, interesting challenge. Because here there's something called hoisting that actually is uh, now any function is going to have uh, private. So you're going to put all of the functions first. So any function will be at the top, the definition. So that's why it's just, it doesn't complain about that. Mm -hmm. This was quite interesting here. And again, all of this is that we are defining it, the function constructor, which will, which will contain the data and our functionality inside of a prototype. So if someone actually uh, told you, why did you, why did you do this? And why not defining this on the person from constructor? Okay. Uh, well, because after all, we need to define is the relevant properties or methods, in this case, the introduce to the proper uh, data. In this case, the person construct. And since here is now, when we use the new keyword for that, it's setting the value of this as a current object, which initially is an empty object. And then is now look at the prototype or the proto change in, from the object function constructor, okay? Uh, which is uh, exactly which is the function object, okay? And because here, after all, functions are hoisted function, which means that you're going to put at the, uh, the at the top and then define all of the things that it needs to. So introduce is part of this function. Introduce is part of the method that you want to work with this data. Initially is with read, okay? Uh, and then, uh, because we are now constructing is a new object here with the name and age, and then we return that. So now that we inherit it is uh, through the new keyword, now that we inherit it, the uh, Greek property, or in this case, now that the new keyword is first, setting the value of this to an empty object, and then add everything to the disk, in this case, Greek. And also, uh, look at the prototype, which in our case is this, uh, and then actually add that property to this person constructor. And all of this is doing as the first step. Because after all, functions are hosted. Uh, which now, when you run this, it say, okay, set the value of this object to an empty object, and then add the proper method, the property and methods to that, which is read. And also we're adding uh, on the pro under the prototype introduce. We add the product, we use prototype here as a way to add functionality to this that we want to share to the prototype change. Then we're adding a property called name and age and assign their uh, proper parameters uh, from the person from constructor. And then we're returning to the person. So by the time we are now calling this, by the time now JavaScript evaluate the sentence, it will say, hey, who's Mike? Well, Mike is the result from this function. What is this function? Person from constructor. Uh, okay, which is, here we're defining as a person. What is a person? It's now a new object called from person constructor. 
okay, what this person construction construction has, it has a grid and it has a prototype called introdus. All right, makes sense. Now return that object. We return that object with grid and prototype with introdus method. We are now assigning new properties to this person object, like name and age, as a way to extend uh, the functionality uh, of this object, okay? Uh, and then we're going to return is the person. So this person object will now contain is name as Mike, age as 30, the greet property, and under the prototype is the introduce method. So because now the value of this, when we are printing the name, is whatever is on the left side, okay? So here, we want now is to point to the person constructor. And that's what we have now. Hi, my name is Mike. That's pretty, pretty interesting, this one. <laughs> Pretty, 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 pretty interesting, this one. Completely missed. Declare a function dot that create a new instance of a dot. Object when invoked with new keyword. Each dot object should have a name, property, and a brief property. Both strings, which are passed in the argument uh, when calling the dot function. It should also have a property called tricks set to an array representing all tricks that dots know, okay? Uh, all of your dot objects must also have access to the two methods that are stored on the construction prototype. Okay. So all of your dot objects must have access to to two methods that are stored on the construction prototype. The first method is learn trick. Should take it in a string as an argument and add a and add that string to the trick array. When a particular dog object it was called on. The second method perform trick should also be to also take a string as an argument. It should check to see if that string is in the trick array belonging to the dot instance. So you should check if that string is in the trick array belonging to the dot instance. It was called on. If so, it should log to the string name perform trick. If not log, the string name doesn't know that trick. Okay. So now that's it. So first is, uh, we're going to define is, since we're using the new keyword, it will be our function construction, uh, where you have now assigned the value of this to the name, okay? Uh, as well as the, this read to the read. And because we want us to now share functionality, uh, the way of how you can do that using the new keyword, okay, is by putting all of them uh, under the prototype, okay, and here we're going to define is the trick, uh, I mean, it's the Okay, it should also have a property here called tricks. Set to an array representing all the tricks in dog node. You should also have the tricks array. Tricks should be empty, in fact. So when you initialize this tricks, uh, they should be empty for that. Okay, so here's what we're going to define this functionality. Uh, and here is the dot uh, prototype where it needs to have two methods, the learn trick, 
which is learn learn trick okay where here is what we're going to define is this functionality and that is learn trick should take a string as an argument after all this is a function it should take and the string is an argument, okay, which is the string, or let's put it more meaningful, trick, okay. Uh, so string is an argument using the function declaration here. Uh, and uh, we want to add that, right? The first method, the trick should take in a string as an argument and add the string to the trick array. And then here we now want to access to the relevant data in our case dog dot trick and then push that element here. So far so good. Uh, as a way to keep track is what is the ability that this dog has. The other is uh, Exactly. Uh, should take a stream as an argument and that stream to the tree array of the particular dog object it was called on. And the other is the second method is perform trick. Should also take a string as an argument, which is this. Uh, it should check to see if that stream is in the tricks array belonging to the dog instance it was called on. If so, it should log the string name perform trick. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, the name perform trick and the name of the trick. Okay. If not, uh, log the string name doesn't know that trick. Okay, so under the prototype, what we define is our functionality. We have is trick, uh, perform trick, perform trick, okay, like so. Uh, yes, the prototype, the prototype, learn trick, perform trick. Uh, and then we get is here a function that we're going to. Uh, to also take a string as a name as an argument. That's the name of the trick. And we're going to verify if that trick exists. Okay. So you should check to see if the string is in the trick array. So one way to take a look is because now, luckily for us, array is exposed through or provide access through common typical solutions to common problems. Like, how do you do that? You know, trick dot filter, or you can say find. What you're going to pass now is an arrow function here. And as you remember, this arrow function, what it's going to do is to, uh, if you define a value of this, that'll be lexically scoped to where it was written. In other words, it'll be to whatever is on the uh, on the tricks here. Uh, so here we're going to see the first element here on an array. Uh, especially from fine. Where you got the element and then the index. Okay. That's right. Where here you have is the element. Okay. Which is our trick. Okay. Uh, yeah, trick. So way to make it more meaningful, you can say uh, mm, uh, 
trick ID, trick name to make it more meaningful. To find this trick, you say trick. Now here when you to find is this. Okay. Find array here. All right, which is here. So here you have this list. Um, we want to find that the trick, uh, and then say, hey, these are tricks here, because that's the only way you to evaluate the expression. Is the trick equal to the trick name that we're receiving as parameter or trick argument? Trick argument. Okay. Is it trick? Is it sent to the trick argument? Make it more meaningful like this. <clears throat> if it is, great. Okay. If it is, great. Because now we're going to store that value like this, which is. Um, trick found or you can say uh, trick found Exactly. You can say this. Trick found. Hey, um, so if trick found, so if we found that trick, okay, okay, let me return now. Let me return the control to uh, JavaScript with this, which is. Hmm. Hey, let me return here. Mm hmm. Hello, trick. Perform trick. What is the output here? It should allow the string name perform trick. Okay. Which means. Is this? Let me now return this. Say, uh, issue log the string name perform trick using template string here. You're going to now access to this object the relevant data, uh, which is in our particular case the dog. All right. <clears throat> in the uh, this is name perform trick and the name of the trick, <laughs> which is trick found. Okay. <clears throat> Otherwise, Otherwise, 
then <coughs> you're going to return a um, name doesn't know that trick which is using template string a dollar sign here as a way to pass dynamic variables and to render that say this dot name occurring the dog doesn't know that uh, trick right pretty much that's what it is this functionality we're going to do and if you take a look now at this And when we run this code, uh, it say, hey, this is an unexpected either perform fetch. Oh, because I think we need to console the log this. Exactly, console log. The same for this. All right. Fido perform fetch, and Fido doesn't know that trick. Uh, Korea has learned trick and perform trick method. Unless you have to provide is the name of the trick. Exactly. Uh, what about now? Don't create obvious has learned trick and perform trick method. Expect to see the perform fetch mm -hmm. to equal see the perform fetch. Oh, okay, uh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so that that's what it is. Right? So in fact, this is now how you can use the find data, okay, in the function constructor object, and it is functionality under the prototype okay and then you can bundle that uh, together and again this is something that as you can see here um, and if you're quite familiar with obvious and programming when you see that kind of thing it's like what in the f is this <laughs> so if Java was your first language then you say okay that makes a lot of sense all right and as said all here we got is the data and the functionality bundled together. So we have is the data and it is functionality here uh, bundled together. But, and I get it, why JavaScript designer uh, say, hey, hey, you know what? We're ashamed of this prototype nature. And especially because now we have saw how other language like Python, Ruby Rail, actually, uh, or, or C++ actually are doing this obscurity way of, or how they are writing this object using now a particularly syntax 
where now we have bundled all of our classes and methods into one single bundle, okay? Using class. That's what we are here. <laughs> That's exactly where we are here and the reason of why we are here. Yep, yep. Totally, totally. The same for uh, inventory. And as you can see here, adding all of this property and method uh, becomes now quite cumbersome and hard to read. <laughs> so for example, from this, you say, okay, this is something that is quite easy to add. You know, you can quickly keep track, but as you are pro exactly, but as your as your functionality, or as you want to provide more and more functionality to an object, and if you do that not only for one single object, but if you do that for multiple objects, you can quickly see that is uh, quite challenging. Quite challenging to read this. Even though that any time you see this, you say, okay, this is where we define the data, but this is where we define is our functionality that we're gonna share uh, across all of this instance, okay? Uh, but again, uh, the whole point of this is that, all right, uh, you know what? Uh, that'll be great because as we have now this uh, function, as we now have this data and get its functionality bundled together, we can now have a better approach, a more readable approach to do this. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. It makes a ton of sense. It makes a ton of sense. <laughs> It makes a ton of sense. For example, here the Cleta function inventory that when invoked with the new keyword returns objects that keep track of an inventory. Your inventory function should accept two arguments, items and price, okay, uh, as a number. The object return should contain a property whose key matches the path in item argument. Yeah, the object return should contain a property whose key match the path in item argument. And is set to another object with two properties, price, which will be set the price argument, uh, the method was called with, and quantity, which should be initially to set one. Mm, okay. Each object, each object, each object returning from this inventory constructor should via the prototype chain and have, and have access to three methods. But as you can see here, first we're defining the data. Mm -hmm. Your inventory function should accept two arguments, item, a string, a price, a number. The object return should contain a property whose key match the passing item argument and is set to another object with two prototypes, with two properties. With two properties, price and quantity. Price and quantity. Mm -hmm. Each object returned from inventory constructor should be via process and chain and have access to three methods. Add item, delete item, and check item. The method check item should take a string as an argument and check to see whether the string exists as a property on the inventory object. 
If so, return the object for that item. If not, return the string item. Item is not in the invention. But what is the data that we're going to collect here? What is the data that we're going to collect? Because from that, we can now define as a function letter that we can operate to the data. Otherwise, we're not. So what do we want to get from this? Oh, and then we got this. this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mm, that's quite interesting. Most of have function in solution context. Callbacks they have a function map for each filter and that kind of thing. Object of matching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, that, that's hmm. Hmm. I, I see why this particular approach uh, has become quite cumbersome to maintain. <laughs> I see, man. I can quickly realize, like, uh, this nature of the prototype chain, especially using the new keyword, is great because you can define the data in the function constructor uh, and their method uh, under the prototype, okay? which is how you can now bundle relevant data and property to and product and methods or functionality together, okay? Uh, yet, in practice, uh, it can, even though uh, that it doesn't look like, like other languages, like C++ or Python, uh, it's quite good. You know, in terms of the end goal, building applications using the opportunity pattern and how that will allow us to build a scalable application uh, in a professional engineering environment. The problem is that I, I get it why a lot of people don't understand how JavaScript actually really works uh, and how this prototype nature is <laughs> and those who know that okay 
uh, now, especially the people from the uh, the the JavaScript or the ECMAScript uh, designers decide to say, hey, you know what? Uh, we're ashamed of this. We don't want to keep doing this. Uh, we prefer now to go and to move toward the class base. Because as you can see here, this can become pretty annoying, lengthy and verbose. Uh, and for those new developers that kick in, they say, wow, what the F is this? <laughs> what in the F is this? So I'm going to do this uh, and then move on to the next topic here. The clear function inventory that when invoked with a new keyword return object that keeps track of an inventory. Your inventory function should accept two arguments, item and price. The object returning should contain a property whose key match the pass in item argument and is set to another object with two proper properties. Price will be set to the price argument, uh, the method was called with, and quantity, which should be initially set to one. Each object returns to the event event. So we got now is the item, the price, okay? Um, the object return should contain a property whose key match the path in item uh, and is set to another object with two properties. Price, which will be the set the price argument that the method has, and quantity, which should be initially set to one. So this is the data that we want to store here. And here, because we're using is now the new uh, keyword as a way to construct objects. This is the way how we how we did, how we need to define objects here. So we got is the this dot item equal to the item, okay, as well as the this dot price equal to price, okay. This dot quantity equal to one. Okay, this is the data for that for the inventory, the items, the price, and the quantity. Pretty much simple. Uh, and each object returned from this inventory construction should via the prototype chain have access to three methods. They have add item, they have delete item. And check item. So the method add item will add additional items to the object returned from the constructor. Uh, it should also accept an item and a price argument, and when invoked, should check to see if the inventory object is called upon has property that match that pass in item. If it doesn't. Uh, if it does not, add one and set it to another item object. Following the same format as above, if inventory object doesn't have a property with that name, increment that item quantity property by one and replace the price with whatever number was just passed in. Hmm. So the method add item will addition will add additionally items to the object return from the construction. It also accepts that. Mm-hmm. Okay.
Okay.
All right, and we are back. Exactly. So uh, now it is time for us to, instead of defining this, uh, we're going now to jump into the hard part here, which is what we care about today. So here we can add this reference to this. Okay, as a way to say no, I want you to now do is this. Let me see if I actually navigate to the proper. Uh, you got it. I think the using is what? Uh, React? Exactly. <clears throat> exactly, exactly. All right. Okay. What is here? So uh, the next topic here is now, now that we know how can we, by creating objects, we can now uh, access to the property methods from the proto that holds a reference to the prototype function constructor uh, that if JavaScript will continue to look up through the prototype change, all of these property and methods that we can have access to work using, uh, with, to work on this object, that's quite interesting and compelling. So plugging with here. So now this is the next topic here. Uh, which is subclassing subclassing with factory functions subclassing with factory functions right where inside of this we're going to see the intro to subclassing and inheritance now this is when the concept of inheriting kicks in which is the introduction to uh, subclasses and inheritance to subclassing and inheritance. Okay. Uh, create object with factory function. Create object with factory functions. Exactly. Or create create object create object with factory functions, which is now a particularly creational design pattern. Okay. 
uh, and then create a subfactory function. Create a subfactory function. Okay. Or create a subfactory function. So then we can now take a look at creating an object with a subfactory of function. <laughs> create an, an object with a subfactory function. Something that I'm quite familiar with. Okay, and then the prototype lookup, which is now how it's going to actually uh, look up through all of this prototype uh, property from the functions object constructor from all of this factory function, and then allow you to access or to inherit all of this property and methods through the entire proto reference or prototype change all right so the prototype the prototype uh, yeah prototype lookup as well as the subclass in for subclass review Subclass review. And call and apply. <laughs> uh, this famous topic on on this one. And call and apply. Which is now we know what we want to do here. We're going to pass is the context to work with this proper data. All right. So, oh, because we have. To zoom in, that's what happened. Okay, much better. All right. So now that we know how by default some built-in objects allow to access to properties and methods mm -hmm. Exactly. So now that we know by default uh, some built-in objects like objects, mm -hmm, like object function, array, among others, allow to access property and methods through through the prototype change that thanks to the dunder proto dunder property okay that thanks to the dunder proto dunder property uh, that which exactly or which thanks to the proto uh, property uh, that holds a reference to the 
prototype pro, prototype function of the construction okay this is a great way this is a, a nice way to share data to share property to share functionality across different relevant or across different and relevant data okay Mm -hmm. We'll introduce inheriting as a way to create subclasses within JavaScript and explain why inheriting is a misleading term. Exactly. So now this, so now JavaScript using it its own technology, technology allow allow us to share or allow us to have access uh, to properties and methods relevant to that object. So, so now, uh, how can we share or how can we access to, yeah, and then how can we access, and then how can we, how can we create uh, a way to share um, a set of functionality which is that across different objects while reusing while reusing while reusing some or all of previous functionality Mm -hmm. A core concept of object-oriented programming, mm -hmm. a core aspect of an object-oriented programming approach is inheritance. Inheritance. Passing knowledge down. by passing, passing knowledge down. So the value proposition of inheriting is 
towards that. Mm -hmm. So how can we reduce the property? There's something to talk about here. So from the following diagram, uh, there is a question. How can we now reuse what we did earlier? Okay, and extend that functionality to our current users. Or data. Exactly. So the term, yeah, the term inheritance, inher inheritance, so the term inheritance is something misleading in JavaScript since it it makes you think that you are passing you are passing down uh, pro properties that you're passing down. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's one of the things here. So in JavaScript, it seems like you think that you are that you are passing down properties down um, or to stick properties 
for uh, from one place from one object to another where the reality where the reality is that you are looking up the properties and methods that you can have access to. That's completely different. That's a game changer. Totally. <laughs> That's a game changer. Yeah, that's a real game changer. Exactly. Exactly. We are doing it manually. Creating objects with factory function. So on solution on solution one. So here here we are uh, going so here we're going to recap uh, about how to create okay we're going to recap about how can we create objects uh, previously okay so pretty much like this So this is the this particular solution, right? The solution two and three. So with classes, uh, we are we are going to see that underneath the hood we are using is solution to which is when you do this manually crafting uh, object creation uh, in the reference so no automation here solution three okay so uh, handcrafting yeah. manually 
creating. Mm -hmm. So manually creating. Yep. Hand crafting. So hand crafting. That's right. So hand crafting object and uh, it is manually handcrafted the object and it is reference Mm -hmm. So what you see is that when handcrafting uh, the object creation and it is bound to uh, share and it is bound to and it is bound to access and, and it is bound to access to all the properties. Yep, that's right. Which is now the solution one, the solution two. And this is actually the image here. I think it is, that's right. Mm -hmm. The yellowish section is known as the function constructor. Okay. And the blue one is when we define our functionality, okay? Mm -hmm. Exactly, all by hand. This is the fine control version. Hmm. 
fine grain control version. Mm -hmm. Wow. Complete because you're doing everything at all by hand. You're doing all by hand. Here, this is a function construction. Pay user creator. This is a function construction where you say, hey, I'm going to receive all of this property here. Uh, and here, I'm going to call this object and I'm going to pass it a proper pay name and pay score. Okay. Uh, that now this will return me a new object that will have a reference or that can have access to the functionality that we define here. <laughs> okay. And because now we want is to, after that define is proper property for this object, get a name pay user creator like this, we use object dot set prototype of this new user, new pay user, and some of the uh, functionality. Like in this case, the paid user uh, functions. So paid user functions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God! And said paid user function here is when you have now an object, right? That will contain is all of the functionality here because you're setting out the prototype of. And if you want to add new property to this new object called pay user account balance it is the account balance that you're receiving from this right and then you return is the user all of this is that you are creating by hand object dot set prototype of pay user function to the user function. Okay, so now you are creating is the reference to say, hey, this pay user function. Uh, now also we're gonna have is you're gonna have have it's gonna have access to this uh, functionality from the user function. You know, so this pay user function will have access to this functionality and to this functionality and so on and so forth, right? So here is what you're now creating is uh, the prototype change. Mm -hmm. And this is the fine grain control of that. That makes a ton of sense. That makes a ton of sense.
Solution, solu, solution three is now uh, automated, automated something for our, for our cell in terms of, mm -hmm. no, for our cell, in terms of, yeah, it's now automate. It's now automating. It's now automate something for ourselves in terms of instead of sharing or accessing. I don't know if you do use the word that instead of accessing, instead of uh, instead of data or property data data and method. Or in this case, method instead of uh, which functionality we can have access. However, it comes with some uh, trader. Mm -hmm. However, but actually, it creates more trouble than it works, than it works. <laughs> which is why solution four came around but no which exactly which solution four came around okay Him around is a lot of less code, but nobody, no, but nobody know how that works. And you need to know that, especially if you're going to provide this. Especially if you're going to provide this. Uh, yeah. If you're going to provide this service, you need to know how that you definitely need to know how that works. Mm -hmm. Especially in JavaScript. The EX 2015 class approach. So we get now the function constructor. Our share methods where we previously do that on the prototype, okay, or by creating objects that allows us to 
thanks to the and by in creating objects that holds the functionality where we can now thanks to the uh, object uh, dot create manually bind the functionality that are shared across all of or that we can have access to in all of these newly object created that satisfy specific needs can have access to that. Remember here wherever the fun is. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to describe now here uh, how that works. Okay, so here we're going to declare a function in memory called user creator and then we're going to uh, declare in reserve space in memory for an object whose la uh, whose label I whose label is so reserve space in memory for this object with the label user function and the value uh, has also, and the value has this same name as a key, and the function as a value, the same for increment as another key, and a function uh, that. Exactly. The next line we're going to build is a specific object. And that is, let's go to call now is user creator. So user creator is a function uh, that will create a new brain execution context, okay, where the first thing it does is to set the parameters, in our case, the name, of course, with the arguments field and phi, respectively. Okay, and then we are now is creating is this new user that can have access to this other object, which holds is this particular user function, this functionality, same name and increment. That okay, so new users inside of the function execution context will have is now the same name and increment. Later on, we are defining the name and this course uh, where we, where the values are from the arguments we are receiving from the user creation parameters Okay, and 
then you want to return is a new user. So this new users will contain is the name, the scores, the same name and increment. So when we now run, uh, so after we run that function, it removed from the call stack, okay? Uh, and then uh, yeah, it removed from the call stack, okay? And yeah, it removed from the call stack, all right? And then the next statement is, hey, I want you to evaluate user one dot same name. Okay, do we have username registered? Yes, it's an object. Okay, can I have access to this thing called same name as a function? Let me take a look in that object. Yes, we have, all right. Let me run that function. Okay, if this is a function, yes. Okay, let me now run that. So here is when you say, hey, console log, I am that this dot name. So I am whatever is now the name uh, has associated with for this data, in this case user one, which is Phil. Hey, I am Phil. Mm -hmm. An empty object. Exactly. Prototype. <laughs> is return an empty object for that. Okay. So of course it's create a new empty object that is linking to that. Um, fail and fly. Fantastic. Yep. That's right. That's right. That's right. What on? Hold on, you did it. Mm 
Then the hidden proto to the uh, option here, option, option function. Exactly, because it's not the lookup process. Those are the photos. Exactly. It looks for the user one method, say name. Exactly. But this is now evaluating you. It's like, well, right now uh, the user one uh, dot say name. <clears throat> so the user one data will look up to the same name method. It will try to log, doesn't find it, look up in the product, which holds a reference to the prototype of the user function. Look up for same name. There, there it is, and then execute it creating in the new brand execution context. This, that now will, the value of this will be, which is something that in any function declaration, whether it is a function keyword or the arrow function, you have the value of this, the behavior change uh, in terms of what is the value of this here. In our particular case, since we're using it, the function keyword, the value of this will be whatever is on the left side when we invoke that. In our case, the user one. So now that we can have access to the name score, say name and increment, and then we now print the log that. Progressive factory function. Okay. Uh, we'll see how to create now functionalities for specific object use cases, which is create sub to the function.
in, in fact or something like that. So first, <clears throat> we're going to take a look at this. to find there. Hey, found there. Where? Really? Hey, thing is red. Oh, this one. So let's uh, let's go to walk. Yeah, let's go. Let's go walk through. Okay. So let's go walk through. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So let's go walk through this code, and that is. In um, using this diagram to describe it, which is now this one, I think we got this. Do, do, do. No, we didn't. 
like this, you capture this, and you say this. Okay. Point Or be the create. Or be the create, maybe one of them. Or just set that prototype. So set the prototype off. Yeah. You're creating a new object. The product. Exactly. Exactly. 
that that's 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 not true. The central protocol. The second or the second object, whatever object you want is to have access to. Exactly. It's like why not calling um, the prototype? <laughs> All right, okay. So with this solution here, this set prototype off is not setting the prototype there. It's just setting is the underscore underscore proto underscore underscore. It's setting is the reference there. Mm. <laughs> that's quite confusing. That's quite compelling. Oh, I get it. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. So it has some factory function here. <clears throat> and here we are creating a sub factory function. So with now this function here, undefined. It.
so now this is how we can create sub factory functions where we can now set the underscore underscore proto underscore underscore reference to uh, we cannot set a proto reference to have access exactly to have access that's right to functionalities okay to have access mm -hmm. to have access to to functionalities from a particular object in our case uh, page score new pay user pay user function the new pay user and the pay user function in our case from pay user function Okay, so now this is how we can create a sub factory function where we can now set the proto reference to have access to the functionality uh, from a particular object the user creator. Okay. and create the link to access uh, to exactly and create the link to access to uh, user creator creator uh, prototype and data prototype and property to extend uh, the functionality in our new pay user. So is this set prototype up that actually setting is the value of the prototype, not the property itself. And this can be confusing. Mm -hmm. So set prototype of is yes, set prototype of Yeah. So set prototype of mm -hmm. so set prototype of is how can we create so set the prototype of method. is how can we set the value of proto and in the spec they give the uh, terminology they give the the name of uh, prototype which is more com which is more which is complicating things unnecessary and we are calling let's go let's go proto 
change the vestige, what is exposed? Exposed in our Chrome DevTools. Makes it. Makes a ton of sense. There are, no, there are arguments. So first, so first, so first we are going to handle is the argument that we get it from or parameters. It'll be first is the pay number, pay score, and all this. The screen name is Elisa. It's active. Is oh and pay score is twenty five. Very good. Mm -hmm. So here we are creating a new function which is in context, 
Vai conseguir esse talvez? Isso como é? And then we're going to uh, create a new object, new user. Uh, we go with the object at the beginning. Uh, that will have is uh, at the beginning is an empty object with a hidden property of proto that will be assigned to the user function here. They want to update the product. Mm -hmm. What I hit a couple days of the photo is the user function. Mm -hmm. Is it that this product bounds to the user? Not at all. So we're going to assign is a on here. We're going to assign is the new pay users prototype to, uh, to have access to the pay user function. Okay.
the product Exactly. Because the new pay user is now give us a bundle too. This is important reference to uh, the pay user the creator here. Okay. Which itself exactly now has a reference to the proto the user content. Thanks to the set prototype. <laughs> well, uh, I just will evaluate if the pay user one if that exists in memory if it is yes all right let me take a look now at the proto at the prototype if do i have this increased balance method no i don't have that do i panic not at all i move on to the proto lookup uh, where it points now to the um paid user features when it points down to the paid user features where this actually contains is the increase it look out for that it has the increments balance now it run the functions and do that and the other is that uh what if i say pay same name it will do that again. It will say, hey, do I have that pay do I have that uh, property under my pro under my object? No. Let me take a look now at the proto that points to the pay user features. Hey, do I have that here? No. Uh, all right. Let me also take a look now at the other proto change. Okay which is now a uh, new pay user and this pay user uh, proto has a reference to the uh, proto to the uh, to the prototype function oh, to the prototype function constructor which is in our case is the user function. Exactly.
Those are the basic functions. Yeah. User one have access to the uh, pay user function? Uh, no. Exactly. We have can access to that. Is that this not going to find it? You should look up for the, that proto. We should look up for the, that proto. Where you set the proto to now have is, okay, where you set the proto to now have that. the new pay user which is this function construction where this function construction also has this functionality that comes from this object which is user function and say yes That's quite, quite, quite interesting. So that'll be all for this video. Uh, take care. Bye-bye.